So you've gotten your players into the adventure that you wanted, and they're in the middle of the dungeon that you prepared for them, and you've shown them the secrets uh, of the traps, and you've made it so obvious, but they're not getting it, and they're not going anywhere. They're just standing there. They don't know what to do. What do you do? Well, that's what we're talking about today on When the Players Are Stumped, Game Master Edition. Hi, I'm GR. This is Player Base. It's a channel about ludology, which is the study of the dynamics of play. And in this tabletop role-playing series, we're talking about simple little tricks that get us over snafus that can really trip us up, especially when we start playing tabletop role-playing games. And one of them is when you reach supposedly dead ends of activity in the middle of a session because the players don't know or understand what they're supposed to do next or they, they can't seem to use any of the tools that they have to succeed in moving forward. Now, there's lots of ways to go about this, but the, the principal thing you really have to understand, which really isn't mentioned in most Game Master books, is that what is obvious to you isn't necessarily obvious to them. And the reason for that is just because they're fundamentally different people and they have different learning styles. Not everybody's a visual learner. Not everyone's uh, an auditory learner. Not everyone's a tactile learner. It's one of the reasons that the game has so many different aspects and like making maps and writing things down and using minis. And you may not need all of them. But every person at the table is going to be different. And I'll give you an example. One of the... B biggest shortcomings I had when I started off uh, dungeon mastering and game mastering was that I have ADHD and autism. So I have a really um, encyclopedic memory of detail. And I don't ask permission before I go into someone's room and start touching everything, even really important people. I've learned not to do that now, but it's not my natural bent. And so it doesn't take much in terms of prodding and motivation for me to, I don't really need to ask or to, be, or to know what the social dynamics are, especially because I'm autistic as well as having ADHD. You know, I would just go in and, oh, hey, what's this? What's that? Hmm. In real life and in the game. So it's very easy for me to play at anybody's table because I make my own fun, so to speak, because I interact with everything, and that's really what I'm there for. Not everybody's like that. Not everyone feels comfortable doing that. Not everyone knows how to do it. Not everyone feels like they have permission to do it. And the other thing is, you may have a very, you may have presented something very clearly uh, in terms of the way you you said it. And, you know, there's a, you know, there's a couple of um, rocks lying around in this otherwise bare stone floor. That may be really clear to you that that's where the trap is, or that there's a key under there. But that, not everyone can hear that and then picture that in their head and go, oh, that's obviously that. Three different modes of imparting information. This is a very, very standard teacher's trick that it is going to really behoove you in game mastering and dungeon mastering to present information that's critical in three different ways. Visually, auditorily, and also in some context, contextually. Pun intended. Sorry to be redundant, but I was being redundant for the purpose of reminding you that the thing that I was saying was important. Ah, see what I did there? Reiterating is part of that context. So when you say it three times in three different ways, they're sure to not miss it. And it's going to seem like you're just giving it away, but it's still not, it's not because they're dumb or they're uninterested in the thing that you gave them. It's that you don't necessarily know how they're going to process information and they don't necessarily know what to make of the information you give them, which is why giving them information, if it's critical, in several different formats, the same piece of information, and also reiterating it is very, very critical because then you won't be frustrated because, because you know, I did all this for these players and they're not doing anything. Oh, man, why don't they involve themselves? And the players aren't going to be frustrated because they won't be like, oh, geez, why, why is he... Why, why is the What's going on here? So let's not use a trap example. Let's use a, an example of a critical piece of information about the nature of the relationship between two lords, right? So you are in a market town uh, run by a count, and his cousin, the baron, uh, is the, um, you know, the county overlord. Oh, sorry, Freudian slip. The county would be run by the count. Um, and the barony, which is adjacent to it, 
is a much more critical uh, trading pass, and so it gleans a lot more in terms of income. Now, you work for the Baron, and the Baron has sent you to his cousin's market town, even though most of those goods travel through his tariffs anyway, uh, to check things out. Now, in order to impart that the relationship between them is tense, you could just say, oh, the relationship between them is tense, but that doesn't necessarily let the players know that that's a critical piece of information in terms of how the adventure is going to go. So we're going to do it three ways. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to show that at once we've established the activity of, we tell them the Baron has the trade pass, so the tariffs go through there, and then the, the Count has the market town. When goods get to the market town and you're in the marketplace, your adventurers are going to notice, because you're going to tell them that they see this, that the, uh, you know, the local city guard or the town guard is inspecting goods and checking to make sure that the customs tariffs are paid appropriately. This is already a clue because they've already paid to get into the area, right? The county is, this is the county seat, but the baron runs, you know, the tariff pass. So they might get excise taxes from that, which might be frustrating and cause tension, which might also cause people to not want to go through his cousin's tariff post, and maybe there's a longer way around. Um, and they'll make a big to-do out of it. People will see it, and then you'll give that, that piece of information to them. They'll be able to process that and associate it with the dynamic. Then, when you have to talk to the Count, you have his manner of speech be uh, polite and, and cordial, but not necessarily courteous or kind or warm, right? And the Baron might you know, be very officious with the party, but be very closed off. That's the second piece of information, which from you talking to them from that non-player character, they get that idea. And then the third piece of information that you would put in here is that you would then maybe mention that, you know, both of them are like the, they're part of the extended family and their grandfather is the local Earl, which means that technically they both have a, with a certain amount of leverage, some chance of becoming the Earl, which is a big step up from being Baron or Count. Those three pieces of information will clue everybody in to the fact, and they'll be able to put it together themselves, which make them feel really smart, that this is where the adventure is going. And that's all, like, you didn't say this is where the adventure is going. You gave them three pieces of information that they then put together themselves. And that's really what you have to do. And it's, it's a struggle at first because it's something, before you get the hang of it, it's something that would be good to put on a Dungeon Master screen, in fact. Um, you might forget, and I often forget, and so then I have to throw stuff out there. But even when I throw stuff out there at the last minute, it still works. You know, if I, give, if I find in the course of play that they're getting stuck, I'm just like, oh, sh I got to give them something that will allow them to be clued in. And this framework isn't necessarily to give you prep work, it's just to let you know what kind of information to give them if you start feeling tense like that. And that's all it is. So uh, if that makes sense to you, let me know in the comments. And if it doesn't, let me know that too. I will see you later. This is Player Base, and I'm GR. Ciao, ciao, ciao.